scientists from California's Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory set to announce a major breakthrough in so-called fusion energy. On Tuesday, the Department of Energy announced a major breakthrough in nuclear fusion. Scientists for the first time ever created a nuclear fusion reaction. It's the first time, by all accounts, they've gotten more heat out than they put in. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. And I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. So you might have heard the news that came out um, earlier this month about this big new fusion breakthrough. I know a lot of you heard about it because I got like a million requests to talk about this. And yeah, my favorite one is the one that says, your silence is deafening. Like I'm covering up a hate crime or something. That, that tweet came out like literally like six hours after they made the announcement, by the way. But hey, you know, the people have spoken, so I actually pushed a video into January so that I could talk about this. Um, why not? Seems like a good way to end out the year. Because this is an interesting topic, you know, and, and, and it's something that people are clearly very excited about. But because of that, there's been a ton of exaggeration and misinformation out there, like always. So let's, let's, let's get to the bottom of this. Was this a big deal? What does it mean? How close are we to, you know, running our cars on Mr. Fusion? Which according to the movie, should have been seven years ago. Anyway, let's talk about it. So when I make videos on topics like this, um, I tend to operate on the assumption that some people in the audience anyway might have no previous understanding of the topic when they come into it. So I try to present it as a high level view as possible. But for this video, I'm gonna assume that you have at least a basic understanding of what fusion energy is all about because I've actually done a video on this that covered all the basics, so there's no need for me to repeat myself. I'll link to it all around here. Plus, it's actually got one of my favorite little comedy bits in it where I, I made the joke that the, the terms Tokamak and Stellarator would be great names for metal bands. This Sunday at the Poughkeepsie Civic Center, Tokamak featuring Stellarator. Ages five and up. I actually hired a guy who designs logos for metal bands just for that bit in that video. Um, I might need to make a t-shirt out of that actually. So anyway, check out that other video for all the details, but the elevator pitch for fusion energy is basically that it's plentiful fuel um, that you can find all over the planet. There's tons of it in the ocean. It's massive energy, no harmful waste. Like every energy source has some kind of drawback. You know, fossil fuels contribute to global warming. Nuclear has dangerous radioactive waste that you gotta deal with. Solar and wind has that intermittency problem. The promise of fusion, the reason why people are so excited about fusion is because it's the one type of energy that would have no downside. It would be a baseload solution with no harmful byproducts. The only downside is it doesn't exist. Which I mean, let's be fair, that's, that's a pretty big downside. So there's a lot of institutions around the world that are working on this, governmental institutions, university institutions, and now commercial entities that are getting into it. Again, there's details into all those companies and their different ways of doing it in that other video, but it basically comes down to two different approaches to make fusion happen. It's basically magnetic confinement and inertial fusion. So the magnetic confinement are the tokamak and stellarators that I was mentioning just a second ago. These are the ones that have the circular pattern that the plasma flows through. And the idea is to get it as hot as possible, many times hotter than the surface of the sun. And it's kept in a confined space by really powerful magnets. The point being both to confine it so that they uh, collide with each other a lot more, but also to, you know, keep it from melting down the machine. Good examples of that kind of thing are the, the Eater project that's being built in France right now and the Windelstein 7X generator that's in, I believe, Germany. Now the inertial fusion is actually what we're gonna be talking about today. Inertial fusion is basically they take a small pellet of fuel and they just blast it from all sides to make it compress down small enough that the atoms combine with each other and fuse. These are basically just different ways of making hydrogen atoms smash together and turn into helium atoms. One could argue that the first type of inertial fusion that ever happened was in the hydrogen bomb, uh, which was actually set off by a regular fission bomb. That's how much energy is required to make this happen. But anyway, yeah, that inertial fusion is what we were talking about that was done at the Lawrence Livermore lab. That's what made all the big news. So let's talk about the big news. So this took place on December 5th at 1 a.m. at the National Ignition Facility at the Lawrence Livermore labs. And basically in this experiment, they blasted a small pellet of hydrogen encased in a diamond shell with 192 lasers. 
These lasers then bounced off the walls of this containment unit that created a shockwave of x-rays that crushed the pellet down and created a plasma for like literally a billionth of a second. This was the hottest thing in the entire solar system. And the big breakthrough is that inside this chamber, those 192 lasers contained two megajoules of energy and the plasma that was created produced three megajoules. To be more specific, it was 2.05 megajoules going in and 3.15 megajoules going out. And yeah, this is a first. Nobody has ever produced more energy in that chamber than was put into it. So yes, this was a big deal. Here comes the asterisk. So the NIF laser, uh, National Ignition Facility laser, NIF, um, the, the, this laser that they used, it actually requires 300 megajoules of energy to produce. And that was then split over and over again and bounced through dozens of mirrors. This produced losses all along the way before it entered the chamber. So if you're talking about what's going on in the chamber, yes, it produced more energy than went in. But if you're looking at the entire system, they basically used 300 megajoules of energy to create three megajoules of energy. The stats around this laser are insane, by the way. So according to Jean-Michel de Nicola, I think I'm saying his name right, he's the chief engineer for the NIF laser system. The NIF laser is the most powerful laser in the whole world. It's the size of three football fields, produces two million joules, which equates to around 500 trillion watts. And for that billionth of a second that it goes off, it uses more power than the entire US power grid. Like if you looked at a chart of the entire US power grid at 1 a.m. on December 1st, you would see a tiny spike for a billionth of a second. That's how powerful this laser is. So we, we recorded a new OLF podcast recently and we talked about it there. Um, I actually learned a lot more about this afterwards. So I was kind of uh, just kind of going off of what I'd heard. But um, the point that I made on there, I think still stands, which is that anything can be a first if you put enough qualifiers on it. Like this is the first time I've recorded this video. This is the first second coffee I've had today. Who am I kidding? This is the third coffee I've had today. So yes, technically, this is the first time they produce more energy than went into it. But when you account for the entire system, they really only got about 1% of what they put in. So, is all of this being overhyped? <laughs> the answer is yes, of course it's being overhyped. Clicks, baby. But look, it's it's something to celebrate. You know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I could use all the good news I can get these days. Um, it is a breakthrough, but it's one of like a million breakthroughs that need to happen before the promise of fusion energy is really fulfilled. That's... That's not a headline that's going to get a lot of people to click, is it? By the way, I haven't, I haven't titled this video yet, so I could be guilty of it as well. Algorithm. So it's, it's still quite a ways off. And I think it's worth mentioning that, you know, renewables are coming down in price so much that by the time we do manage to crack fusion energy and make it commercially uh, profitable and available, it's possible that the cheapness of renewable energy and storage for renewable energy will just make it economically more feasible to the point that fusion might not even be necessary. You know, as, as uh, many science communicators have pointed out, uh, the sun is a giant fusion reactor right there in the sky. All we have to do is just collect the energy that it throws at us every single day. Now, solar and wind have intermittency issues, like I said before, but the storage solutions that are gonna make up for that, those are getting cheaper too. And actually there's an even bigger debate around that as to whether or not the future of energy is in giant centralized stations like fission or fusion nuclear reactors or in you know solar uh, individual units on houses and microgrids and communities. Which version of that's gonna win out? Well, we'll see, I guess. So yeah, it is a breakthrough, but the people that are claiming that this is, you know, the thing that's going to change the world, they are they are overselling it. But it is important and and it's and it's a good way to finish off the year. Uh, there have been some great videos on this that have already been done. Kyle Hill did a great stream about it. Uh, Anton Petrov, of course, and the, the press conference that they did. Um, I'll link all this down in the description. They really go into the details of how specific and. Uh, like really complex this machine is. Like one of them was talking about the, the diamond pellet that contains the, the hydrogen and how like it had to be one of the smoothest surfaces in the entire world. And it's, it's the size of like smaller than a BB. Um, so it, yeah, just like how much goes into making this is staggering when you hear it all. But I think, you know, there, there's a point that could be made that, you know, as, as much money as we are putting into creating fusion energy in this you know whole process that we're doing, you know, maybe a parallel could be drawn to how much money was spent first um, uh, decoding the human genome. It took billions upon billions of dollars to do that. And now you can do it for about a hundred bucks. Anyway, here's hoping. 
So there we go, guys. That was that was my last video on this channel for 2022. Um, I'm probably going to have a, a blooper reel coming out before the end of the year and maybe a, a compilation of all the the sketches and comedy bits that, that I did. So there's, there's some more fun stuff that's coming on its way, but, but this is uh this last video. We made it through another year. I've got a lot of cool things planned for 2023. Uh, some, some short films, bigger stories. And I know I've been teasing this for a really long time, but I am in the background working on a nebula series on ancient North American sites. Like, did you know that there was a native American city near the Mississippi that was bigger than London at the time? Or that there are earthworks in Louisiana that are as old as the pyramids of Giza? Like, I want to go to all these places. I want to go there. I want to tell their stories. And these would be some pretty big projects that need to be backed by a service like Nebula. So if you want to see that happen and you want to support other big projects by creators like me, uh, maybe sign up for Nebula. I not only post my videos early there, I post them ad free, which you wouldn't hear this sponsor read if you were watching it there. And from time to time, I throw some bonus info on there that I don't share on YouTube. Plus there's my Mysteries of the Human Body series that's on there and I have an ongoing series on forgotten atrocities. Now, if you want to sign up for Nebula, you can just go to watchnebula.com. It's about $5 a month, less when you sign up for the yearly plan. But that gives you access to all the hundreds of great creators on there and classes. It, it just, it keeps growing. There's really cool stuff. But if that $5 is still a little eh for you, there is a little trick. And, and some of you know where I'm going with this. It's the Curiosity Stream bundle. If you go to curiositystream.com slash Joe Scott, sign up for the Nebula bundle, you can get full access to Nebula and Curiosity Stream for $14.76 for an entire year. It's, it's a little over a buck a month and you get Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream, which is the best streaming service for documentaries uh, in the world, as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, I'll put that link in the below area down there. Go check it out. Um, there's some great new creators that have joined Nebula recently. It just keeps growing and I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of it. So again, I want to thank you guys for supporting this channel. Um, God, it's been eight years now that I've been doing this, but I want to thank you for your support this last year. Like I said, I've got a lot of cool stuff planned for the next year. Merch is still available at answerswithjoe.com slash store. Um, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff happening in that department in the next year as well. So I encourage you to like and share this video if you liked it. I'll put a link right here to my previous Fusion video, which I was talking about quite a bit during this one to give you a little bit more background. Um, and, you know, go check out all the other little links that might show up on the browser that have my face on them. And if you enjoy them, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. And with that, I bid you adieu. Have a happy and safe New Year's and I'll see you in January. Love you guys. Take care.